Hello guys, what's up? My name is Rajat. Welcome back to my channel. Today is a big day for me and my channel VFX World because we have today a very special, special chief guest, Steve Wright with us and I called him as a, like a tiger of nuke. So many guys talked him, so many things I saw, so many podcasts, some guys talked him about like uh, he's a godfather, but I feel personally he is a, like a tiger for nuke and all. I followed him from long time back and Steve, trust me, you are my inspiration for learning, start learning Nuke. I was waiting that, w I was like wondering, like one day I'll talk to you, but uh, this opportunity came and thank you so very much for joining today with us. And guys, today we have a lot of discussions, so don't skip the video because if you really skip the video, you will really miss so many informations from Steve Wright, sir. Uh, so Steve Wright, sir, uh, we're starting this podcast with all of you. So please hold your seat and we are just coming back after this intro. So Steve, first of all, I just want to ask you that how are you on this COVID-19 situation and all? Well, thank you, Rajat. Doing very well. We're, we're very lucky here in America. You guys are having a very tough time in India. We've got it under control. I've had my vaccinations, so I'm, I'm good now. A lot of places were actually letting, uh, letting down with the masks. Okay? Yeah. But uh, it, it's a rocky road, and, uh, but we're doing very well over here, and I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. Thank you, Steve, for telling this. And Steve, uh, please be sure that uh, vaccine, after doing vaccination, also many guys are getting infected inside in India. Also, we are getting uh, like suffering from second wave. So please be careful for this. So guys, uh, those who guys don't know really about Steve, I have a small introductional part with uh, Steve. So Steve Wright is a master trainer teaching visual effects compositing with Nuke, and since 2005 has trained well over a thousand artists on compositing visual effects. His training clients also including top visual effects studios such as Pixar Animation, Frame Store, Prime Focus, Disney, blah 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 and he, he has also produced so many new tutorials that are for featured on LinkedIn Learning, Linda.com and so many other stuff. I wish that rest of the things you should know from his own voice. So Steve over to you. Please introduce yourself. Rest of the part which I missed from this introduction on my small small list. I have you have a lot of list to tell just I want to learn from you. Well, thank you, Rajat. That was a dynamite introduction. Thank you. Uh, I, I think the only thing you left out is I've published two books on compositing. Okay. You can find them on Amazon.com. Uh, one book, Digital Compositing for Film and Video. Now, that's the big book. Now, that's designed for a sitting compositor. You're mm -hmm. supposed to have that book sitting right next to you, and you're keying a blue screen, and you're having a terrible time. Boom, you can look it up in the book, okay? The other book is Compositing Visual Effects, uh, for aspiring artists. Now that's different. That's not intended for a compositing artist. That's intended for support people like producers, directors, uh, production coordinators, uh, people that would like to understand more about what the heck are visual effects. So it's sort of so for, for people who are not working in the industry, but would like to understand more about it. And, uh, I've, and I've, you've, I've also traveled, uh, I've been to India 11 times actually. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Maybe next time, next time I I will I will wish that I should uh, meet to you. <laughs> yeah, I'll make sure to look you up next time I'm there. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, for this amazing introduction part. And guys, I hope you guys are also excited to learn a lot of things. So, guys, uh, Steve, my next question is like, uh, tell me about your journey a bit in short. If you really want to tell in details, no issues, just go for it. Because our Indian viewers really want to know about from educational background, where it's coming from, how to start, how to grow, and what, right now, where you are right now. So, what is the journey? What is the difficulties you faced and all? Just tell us. We really want to know that. Okay. Well, uh, my journey was a very strange one because it started so long ago. I started compositing before there was any compositing software. I actually started entertaining people with pixels at Atari. I used to be a game programmer at Atari. So from there, I got to Hollywood and I started working on video games for Hollywood movies. And then I got into the visual effects industry in Hollywood. And was mostly in those days, it was 3D. And I worked at Robert Abel and Associates, which is a very early firm that did groundbreaking 3D work. Okay. Those were the days where you wrote your own scan line rendering software. There, there was no Maya, there was no Houdini, there was no nothing. You wrote your own. 
So uh, I decided that when, when the uh, evolution of the industry caused Robert Abel to fold, I set up my own studio in Hollywood. I had a shop for seven years, and we worked on a whole bunch of feature films and television commercials. So what was happening in the early days, we, we had 3D. So client would come in, we would make a 3D element for him, plus the alpha channel. He would take it to post and, and composite it all together in post. And I said, no, 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 we should do it here. We should hand him a finished shot, right? So I went out and researched the industry, you know, what's out there, what, what software do we have that I could use to composite my CGI with the live action? Nothing. There was, this is before After Effects, okay? The only thing out there, frankly, that could put two pictures together was the Pixar computer. Okay. Now, this is in the days of, of uh, Skywalker films and, and um, the, the Pixar, they were building a, a, a rendering engine. And at the back end was this big frame buffer with a bit slice processor that was used to composite all the images. So they cut that off and Pixar released that as a product. It was a box big box cost seventy thousand dollars and it plugged into the back plane of a 4d 70 an, uh, an sgi machine it was blazing fast for the day i remember i got my stopwatch out i was able to do an a fine rotate on a 2k plate in under seven seconds wow wow really well that was astonishing back then right so i got the pixar and i started trying to learn the bloody machine now no manuals, no teachers, no books, no classes. No YouTube channels. No YouTube channels. <laughs> no LinkedIn learnings. No VFX world. What I did was I had the um, simply the command structure for the uh, Pixar. It had operational commands. You know, do an A fine rotate, do a warp, do a scale, and 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 so I learned it from the operator's manual for the command structure. And it took six months before I thought I was smarter than that damn computer. So I finally got very good at compositing. Of course, now this caused me to learn compositing down at the atomic level. Okay. I was down at the bits and the bytes and the pixels with okay. this damn thing. Okay. So I started compositing shots. I was the only guy in town that could composite shots. Well, shortly after that, um, Kodak opened up CineSight in Hollywood. Now, my, my studio was about two blocks from CineSight, Hollywood, and they offered 2K film scans. Well, my Pixar had a 4K buffer. Okay. So I could handle two, I could handle four 2K images. Images, okay? exactly. Yeah. So as soon as uh, CineSight opened their film scanning division, boom, I'm in the movie business. Wow. And all, all that knowledge I gained doing commercials, I could now plow into movies, okay? So I bought a film recorder, Solitaire Cine 3, and uh, hooked it up to my network. And now I could composite on the Pixar and ship it over to the Solitaire and turn out 35 millimeter film of superb quality. So that's what got me working on feature films. Okay, so then uh, we did, I did that because, like I said, my studio was around for about seven years. I sold that, and then I worked at uh, CineSight Hollywood. Now, the nice thing about CineSight Hollywood was, first of all, Cineon software. Yeah. Wow. That was cool. See, the Pixar had no user interface. Uh -huh. you, you, you composed a shot by putting together uh, Unix shell script, 2,000-line Unix shell scripts, mm -hmm. command line uh, structure, right? But Cineon had a user interface. Wow, I thought I had died and gone to heaven. Okay, now the Cineon uh, software was state of the art, top of the line, 10 bit log compositing. And now I, I was working on the A films because I was at CineSight. When I had my little shop, okay, I, I wasn't able to work on blockbuster movies. Okay, so at CineSight, I get Batman and Robin, you know, and things like that. Okay, although that was a hateful movie, ooh. <laughs> but the effects were great. So at any rate, so I did a uh, cine site for about six or seven years, uh, maybe eight, actually eight years. And um, then uh, they have <laughs> interesting story. Um, one, one, one thing I've always done wherever I worked is I go to the department upstream and downstream from okay. my job to understand what they do and what they do. Okay. 
I found that to be very productive. Well, this time it saved my career because Kodak opened the DI, Digital Intermediate Department, in the same facility. So I wandered over to the DI people. I met uh, um, uh, Jill Bogdanovich, the colorful colorist, and her father, uh, Dr. Bogdanovich, who was the color scientist who invented DI. And at CineSite, I learned about log film from Glenn Kennel, the color scientist that invented log compositing. Okay, So I'm learning the, the stuff technically mm. from the scientists that created the technology in the first place. Okay, Like I said, I learned compositing at the atomic level. Yes, yes. The very base level. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, so I, I got into the DI process and I became the go-to guy for the DI department, right? Well, one day, Kodak decided that the CineSight Hollywood office wasn't making enough money, so they closed down CineSight. Mm -hmm. And they laid off all of the compositors, mm -hmm. all of the artists, except for me. <laughs> it was the one guy they kept. The DI department requested to keep me. So I stayed another two years at CineSight. <laughs> okay. That's why you're a tiger. Uh, yes. and, nobody, and nobody can replace the tiger. No, nobody. <laughs> so, uh, so after uh, what happened after CineSight, then I got into teaching and training. I had published my book; it was it was doing very well. So people were asking me to come travel, teach, train, and I got into teaching and training in about 2005, and been doing it ever since. Oh my God! But it, and, but unfortunately, th that path is long gone. There is no. Okay, today you have to go to the school, you have to get your exactly. certificate, you, okay. <laughs> we have to do a lot of stuff. In fact, you have to get at least a degree or diploma, anything to join in this industry. So this is a long stuff. Uh, you know what, Steve, mm -hmm. sir, uh, that you, the way you are telling the story, it's like I can see the entire film in, in front of me and it's getting a ghost bumps. And ah. I, am, I, I, am, I am very younger than you. And today I am really feel a proud to share a screen with you. So genuinely, I'm telling this from my bottom of my heart, and th this this thing really getting me a ghost bump. That so many guys are like thinking to talk, to chat, to uh, learn from anything, anything from you. And today I'm doing all the things which I really wish from last one two years when I started the YouTube journey. I don't have any idea that one day I I just know all your journey from your own voice. So today today my uh, my good night will be a most interesting good night ever. <laughs> Well, thank you, Rajat. You're very kind. Thank you, I enjoy telling my story. <laughs> so, guys, uh, I hope you guys are also enjoying this. And going forward to the next question, which is my also favorite question, that Steve, uh, right now I am also upgrading myself for YouTube for my career. I am day to day learning, upgrading new softwares. Talking about the new, I am also start watching any other purchase course from uh, Foundry team and some un like an academy. Many more things are there in internet to learn new to upgrade new. So, <coughs> are you still upgrading, or you are making something so that guys can upgrade their themselves? Or, or my basic question is all about like, are you still upgrading yourself? Oh yes, I indeed. Uh, Every time a new version of Nuke comes out, uh -huh. I dive right in. I learn the new. I, I learn all the new apps, and uh, I'll produce. I'll update my training course. Like the um, when 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 they added the uh, the flow, the optical flow. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I went and studied that. Did a whole bunch of tests. To make sure what I do is I spend hours figuring it out so I can teach it to you in minutes. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And so I, I always, you know, learn the latest and greatest part, and then I'll update my training course. I have a Nuke, a 12-week Nuke training course, A to Z, user interface to 3D rendering, including the Ray render. Okay. And so I always upgrade it, so it's always got the latest and greatest stuff. And uh, you, you, have to stay, you have to stay continually on top of your field. This is a rapidly advancing field, mm -hmm. okay? We live in the world of technology. And it, because it's software, we have to evolve rapidly. So not only do you need to have a basic training that is certified, that is reliable, and, and focused on the issues, but you also have to keep, if you stand still, you fall behind. Exactly. Very, very nice. So, uh, Steve, talking about this topic, so uh, if, if, if sometimes, sometimes artists told me that, sir, I, I'm upgrading myself instead of Nuke, but sometimes Nukes are facing some issues, like 
not issues new issues they are fishing issues to learn new so they said sir after effects is more uh, user friendly to learn so i told them that new is a production level software but after effects was using is in production but currently just because of new is node based software and the rest of the softwares are also like houdini these other softwares are also in node based so the uh, like uh, collaboration with these softwares or other softwares with new is a pretty well so please start learning with new but they said no why should i learn new when we do all, all the same things in after effects in a low time and also in a good output so what you what is your suggestion for them that why they should learn nuke because i told there many times they said no sir i have to go with after effects but i wish i want that you tell them so that they should learn nuke also after effects okay. but nuke also okay the advantage of after effects is it is easier to learn and if you would use after effects as a springboard into nuke mm-hmm. Nuke is the industry standard. Exactly. Okay. If you're going to be a serious compositor and you want to work on major feature films, you must know Nuke. Yeah. It's that simple. That the compositing department might have 50 Nukers and maybe three or four After Effects guys. Mm-hmm. There'll be a few After Effects guys. There's a few things that After Effects does quickly and efficiently and very very good. But uh, the the vast majority of all your visual effects is done with Nuke around the world. They are the 900 pound gorilla in the industry. Mm. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So for true professional work you need to learn nuke. Hmm. Definitely. So guys uh, next time when you are having this kind of thought you should watch this particular area and must <laughs> watch this thing from Steve Wright sir and if you watch this multiple time I'll get more watch time. and also more views <laughs> so jokes apart guys so uh, steve sir i my next question is like uh, my inspiration for joining vfx industry is andrew kramer so you know him he is a video copilot owner he uh, made element 3d a lot of i don't need to give any introduction for him so when i was in student my inspiration to join vfx industry is him nuke learning is you uh, like after effects obviously andrew kamer so these are the my inspiration to join like you guys like big big youtubers and you, you production level experts are my inspiration so what is your inspiration what sorry what was your inspiration like uh, when you decided that yes this things inspired me a lot to let's go through with this all this line and let's ca- make my career on this vfx industry i was sitting on the couch watching a super bowl And you know the Super Bowl has fabulous commercials. Okay. And this was Super Bowl um, in 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 nine like what year, hun? Nineteen eighty five. Nineteen eighty five. Super Bowl nineteen uh, in nineteen eighty five. Mm-hmm. I'm watching one of the commercials called "Sexy Robot." Okay. And it was a chrome female robot talking about, oddly enough, cans, canned food, but. What struck me about it was the incredible elegance and smoothness of the motion, the animation of the character. You can look up "sexy robot" on on Amazon on and YouTube, and uh, another the official name for it is brilliance. That's the uh, the the name that the uh, advertising agency put it. So brilliance or sexy robot will get you this. I was struck. by the beautiful motion of the animation of that CG character that I then got that's where I, I dived in and got my job at Robert Abel and Associates in Hollywood okay was because of that commercial and that led into me becoming a 3D artist which led into me becoming a studio which led me trying to solve my customers problems of compositing which got me into the Pixar which got me into compositing oh my god <laughs> so my inspiration was the sexy robot television commercial sometimes some this kind of stuff's also giving inspired inspired someone so this yes. is also another big story and with, with in the, in the uh, which age you uh, decide matlab these things happened in which age oh for me yeah oh i was <laughs> i was in my 30s <laughs> okay nice. so currently i'm 26 so i have a lot of other times to like, focus like my career like i said I, i started a long time ago before teachers before books before <laughs> youtube <laughs> nice uh, so uh, sir let's do a, a i have a one fun question for you if i give uh, like suppose i am nuke okay suppose i am nuke and i am giving you an opportunity to change anything which you uh, suppose right now you can't change anything because you have a lot of permission you need to do some things to take permission to change but you really wish to change something inside of nuke that can help 
crypto or industry that can really help to decrease the time length. For example, if I talk about rotoscoping, if you can Im, uh, like Im, uh, in, in, invent any uh, rotoscoping hair details tools that can really help out your hair details. So this kind of thing, can, so if I give you a chance to add anything on Nuke, what you can really want to change or add? Well, uh, what I would do is I would add more GPU programming to speed it up. Okay, GPU programming. Because, you know, GPU programming, right. Exactly. Uh, because you spend an awful lot of your development time sitting and waiting for the screen to render. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the GPU programming really speeds things up. And not by 20% or 50%, but by 500%. So it's a real big win. And they're moving in that direction. I would just ask them to move faster. That's the only thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so but Nuke is remarkably well equipped. The toolkit in Nuke is wonderfully complete and exactly. powerful. In fact, yeah. day by day, they are increasing their, this, like they're sorting out all the problems, bugs and all. Uh, like recently, the all the updates, new updates I saw in Nuke, and the, 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 those updates are pretty nice, pretty nice. And they are really uh, make it shorter. In fact, uh, I uh, recently done a podcast with Boris FX. So the Boris FX plugin came with Nuke for Silhouette Paint and Silhouette Roto. Those plugins are also really user friendly to import a complete silhouette alpha as well to nuke within simply one click. In fact, the shapes previously we have to import the shapes from uh, like a silhouette to export in nuke shapes and you have to import. But currently you just have to make a one single click. The shapes are there. The alpha is there. The rotoscoping is there. So these are the I I I was uh, like uh, wishing from one two back so, uh, one two years back that if the softwares will start getting collaborate with each other what things happen. So right now I can exactly see Nuke with Boris FX or Silhouette and Silhouette with Mocha. This collaboration really works and it's really helped us to uh, work in a very smoothly. When I started working on production on 2016, that time support and currently support is really massive difference. And we're really thanks to all of you guys so to help these things to uh, manage. So thank you again, sir. Yeah especially uh, what we call round tripping, okay? You have to move from Nuke to Maya back to Nuke or Nuke to Silhouette back to Nuke. Well, the uh, Silhouette Paint plugin for Nuke, have you seen that? Yeah, I am using that. Okay. Uh, did you see my video that I made for, for Boris on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. On, on the, in, in, in YouTube, you can look up Silhouette mm -hmm. by Steve Wright, mm -hmm. and I've got a, almost a 30-minute video that mm -hmm. shows you all the wonderful features I'm really impressed with uh, Boris's silhouette paint. Exactly. What they did was, you, as you know, Nuke's paint, they're both a uh, vector-based paint system, a procedural yeah. paint system, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But Nuke's architecture, uh, the, the software, the the, uh, the script can get heavy. We get a lot of strokes going, okay? Exactly. Well, they beat that with silhouette. They've, they've got a method where the strokes do not bog down the machine. You can have a thousand strokes on mm -hmm. one frame. It still moves very fast. So that's very important. Exactly. The other thing is about the uh, Boris paint that I love is that the um, they're using the 64-bit floating point mm -hmm. processing environment that exactly. Nuke uses. Okay. So the image quality is absolutely identical. And as you say, it's so easy. You just click to open up the uh, silhouette interface select the job, boom, you're yeah. now in silhouette, paint your thing, click back to Nuke, and off you go. In fact, I so just want to, add, yes, just continue, continue, sir. Yeah, th th I just wanted to say they are beautifully integrated for rapid round tripping. Exactly. In fact, I just want to add two more things. I think you also agree with that. I watched that videos uh, that uh, the rendering method we have to, we don't have to render twice because previously we have to render it first from silhouette, then again in nuke. So this thing is really helped. We have to render it only one time. In fact, when you watch on real time view, first time in nuke, the screens are coming like this, buffering. But uh, when you import that alpha, this is playing like a normal real-time view. When I saw this, I just shocked that, oh my God, is updating too much. In fact, it's really well. The main thing is when you work, the main irritating part is like the screen is updating like this in Nuke. Every frame mm -hmm. start getting buffer. If you zoom in, zoom out, it's buffer lost. So this thing is really amazing, awesome. So, they, they also have a really robust tool set. Now, Nuke's paint is very mature and it's very good. You got mm -hmm. clone brushes, you got reveal brushes, you can do temporal offsets, all kind of wonderful thing. Uh, but since Silhouette is, is purpose built a paint system, mm -hmm. they have even more tools that, that help speed your paint and improve your quality. One of the things I just, there were two things about it, just loved was dual offset clone brush. 
Mm-hmm. You know, if you're painting, you're painting a, a wall and there's a gradient to the wall. So if you sample above and paint below, it's too light. You sample below and stroke above, it's, it's too yeah. dark. So this allows you to do a sample above and below and it averages it together and it's perfect. Okay. Exactly. I've never seen that before. It's brilliant. Okay. And the, the other thing I, I love, one of the other features that I love is what they call the paint with detail. They create a high frequency filter so that the detail is lifted out and then you can paint that detail into some other part of the picture. It brings the detail, but not the color. So you, you can paint with mm-hmm. incredible precision and great control. Also speed, very fast, very fast. Exactly. I this, love silhouette paint. <laughs> exactly, Sa- same thing I also want to use that same, the speed, I really love that speed part. Whatever it is, the speed yes. is super. Okay, so the next question is for the freshers because so many freshers are yes. right now waiting for jobs. So they are yes. asking me, sir, we are figuring out that are we no proper things? So where they should learn proper if they are looking for their career is in like paint prep artist or like a starting their career from compositing artist so what is your opinion for them that uh, to learn from their or learn from this youtube channel or that whatever just guide them so that they can really uh, start learning or those who guys already learned properly what is the next step after learning how they approach to companies because you know the covid 19 situations and all Yes, yes. Well, the the thing to remember, if you're a fresher, is to have a demo reel that's focused on what the company's trying to hire. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you're a fresher, you can't walk in as a senior compositor. Mm -hmm. You can you need to do your paint, roto and and cleanup. So you want to master those skills, you want a demo reel that shows those skills, don't don't show me a CGI composite. I'm not hiring you to composite the CGI. That's the compositors. Uh, I want to see you remove a reflection in a window, okay, f- to, for cleanup. I want to see you remove some wires. I want to see you roto a difficult character with some hair flying around. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you need a demo reel that shows the skills that they're looking for in a new hire. Okay. Too many of them put together a demo reel, I mean, nice shots, but they don't exhibit the skills that the studio is looking for. So you need a focused demo reel on exactly what that studio is looking for to hire. You also need to go, if you try to do the YouTube thing all by yourself, you wind up with holes in your knowledge. You also don't get how to approach a shot. Mm -hmm. This is the thing that's missing. The, the, you, go to, you go to the schools and they teach you that, you know, this button does this and that slider does that and you can scale it up, you can scale it down. Only the tools but, parts. Yes, learning the tools. But that's only phase one, okay? Phase two is how do I use those tools to solve a shot? Okay. So you, you need to gain experience on, on executing an entire shot, okay? So exactly. that's, that's really the big issue. So to, to break into the industry, you want to attend the, uh, the most credible certified institute you can. Okay, you want those credentials because that'll help you get your job. You need your demo reel focused on the issues that the companies are trying to hire, paint, roto, clean up. And then persistence, patience, and network. You have to network your buddies, network your friends, mm-hmm. uh, tune into the, uh, you know, the Facebook pages. Uh, frankly, it takes a lot of work to break into the industry. Exactly. Okay? Uh, it takes uh, a lot of work. Yes, yes. In fact, uh, when I was start journey in this industry, I also facing the same thing. If you don't have any connection, as you told, like connections with friends and all, you are considered as like a nobody. Like yes. everyone is like you are nobody. Completely yes. nobody. So these things matter. So yes. guys, I hope you already know about this thing. But those who guys don't know, please, I am highly recommend this. This entire podcast will really help you a lot. So apart from this, well, it's, it's, yes, it's, yes, it's not who you know. It's who knows you. Yes. Ninety percent of all hires come from somebody in the company saying, "Hey, I think Rajat would make a great guy for this project." So then they call Rajat, okay? Thank you so much. So it's who knows you, exactly. all right? So network, network, make friends, be nice. Be a team player. That's very important in this industry is to be a team player, okay? Thank you, thank you. So apart from this, we are have an announcement. That announcement uh, should be done by Steve Wright, sir, by himself. So over to you. Well, thank you, Rajat. I just want to let everybody know 
that I've just completed a huge 42 lesson nuke program for Framebox of India. Okay. okay. 42 weeks. It's a one hour of lecture and then one hour of, of practice. You guys call it practice. We call it lab. Okay. <laughs> Where you take what you learn in the hour lecture and then you apply it to actual images in, 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 on the machines in the lab. So it's a very large project and it is is prepared by me and uh, I have taught their key guy. They have a number one guy who is very good, very good, uh, very impressed with him. Uh, taught him how to chettle, by the way, his name is Chettle. Mm -hmm. And so I taught him how to, how to deliver the whole course and then he is teaching all of the frame box instructors. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. they have a template uh, where every instructor will teach the same course the same way. And this introduces standards and professionalism in the new courses at Framebox. Okay, so uh, when it will uh, release, or it's released already? Uh, I'm not quite sure when they're planning to, to release it, probably in the next quarter. Okay, so guys, whenever it will release, I'll update on this video description box below this link. And whenever you really wish, you can go and check it out. Is this a free or complete purchase course? Oh, no, this is part of their two-year uh, certificate program. Okay, okay, program, okay. okay. So guys, I think you, this can help you guys a lot. Go to Framebox. Yeah. Go to Framebox. <laughs> Go to Framebox. And I wish that this will really help you a lot. So uh, Steve, sir, we are almost done for the, this. So apart from all this, if you really want to tell anything about all our Indian fans, Indian viewers for you, like uh, they are suffering from COVID-19, anything you want to tell apart from this, please go ahead. Well, you know, it, it, COVID has been a disaster for everybody but especially India. You, uh, the, India has been hit very hard. And of course, our visual effects industry has also been hit very hard. However, there is a silver lining in this very dark cloud. And that is, you know, for a decade before COVID, we had always talked about virtual studios and remote productions and stuff like that. And it never really got anywhere, but COVID forced it on the industry. And now, Two things have happened. One is an, a mental acceptance of it, okay? In the, in the early days, there was resistance to it before COVID, but now it was forced on, you, on them. So they had to set up the infrastructure. And that's the second thing is they have infrastructure now. The big consideration for uh, studios is security. So they, they want to know, how are you going to secure my movie when you've got people scattered all over the planet working on my shots, okay? Exactly. <laughs> so the software has been developed, encryption keys have been uh, developed, protocols have been established. They now have the security problem solved. Exactly. So when we come out of COVID, I am predicting most of that is gonna stick. Our industry is gonna move into a virtual production, remote production, which is great for artists, because we do not have to move to Mumbai in order to get a job. Okay? Exactly, sir, exactly. Uh, we, 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 we can stay in Petna, and, and a man in a machine can sit there and make a wonderful living and work on A films, okay, number one, number one movies. Exactly. Uh, without having to pick up and move to a whole other city. And it's also very good for the studios, because the studios, uh, they, they reduce their fixed overhead. They don't have to fly you in and put you up in a house and, and give you a desk and pay for the air conditioning and all that kind of a thing. They so just it lowers have to, their overhead. Yeah, they just have to turn on the systems and that's it. Right. Well, they'll, they'll have a core team at headquarters, okay? They've got to keep a core team, uh, but then the, 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 the real hands and arms are, are out there, okay, <laughs> working remotely. And so it, it's good for the industry, it's good for the studios, and it's good for us. The artists. Exactly. In fact, uh, like few years back also, we were thinking about like, uh, like I am from West Bengal, Kolkata, you know about that. And we, we have to go from our hometown to Mumbai, Hyderabad to stay long for like six months, seven months. We don't have to come back to our hometown. On that time, we were thinking about if if we can work from home, but COVID make this possible. So this is a yes, positive things. Definitely. Yeah, on the other side of COVID, it will be much better for us. <laughs> so guys, don't be scared. As I said, COVID impact is very bad, but the post COVID impact, in fact, we are right now working from work from home. So we know that everything is working smoothly and we have to work because humanity uh, can modify everything uh, by their own. So relax and uh, just, just keep learning in a good way, good things.
right sir stay safe stay, stay safe. safe yes stay safe <laughs> so guys sir uh, like we are done for now and uh, if if you have any suggestions for me my channel vfx world anything any suggestions so that i can improve myself no you you do a great job uh doing more of this kind of thing where you would talk to senior industry veterans like myself uh to help the the freshers and and young people who are moving into the industry so doing more of this kind of thing with you know people that have been in the industry for a long time you might also have a uh, um speakers that will talk on a topic like we could spend a whole time on keying whoa mm -hmm. keying is a huge subject or maybe tracking i mean tracking is is really important and a lot of people have trouble tracking exactly. so have subject matter experts would be another thing you could do okay exactly so those are my thoughts thank you sir <laughs> for giving me this amazing uh, like feedback i will really work on all these things and i i like assuring you that in future i'll come up with more amazing tutorials and uh, that can really help to all our uh, like indian viewers and also outside of from indian those are watching me and sir i just want uh, best wishes from you that my channel will grow more and my viewers are also uh, like getting more good knowledges so this is the only <laughs> thing i really want because my channel focus to give a proper knowledge from throughout me whatever i'm learning i r&d and all i uh, learn from any other like i today i learn a lot of things from you so i'm sharing this knowledge to others so my basic focus is to sharing knowledge because i believe when i started nobody was there as you said no youtube channel no books nothing so same <laughs> bit of same things happened from me also but i wish that the industry need a very good quality of artist those who have knowledge those who really work for our industry hard working and all so this is my motive this is my uh, like uh, things to for coming in youtube so thank you sir for joining this podcast today thank you so very much